Well, if you actually were in Atlanta at ASHRAE and came by to see us, man, thanks so much for coming by. I hope you got your shirt, got to hang out with you a little bit. Um, it was a, an awesome, awesome trade show. Looking forward to seeing you again next year. Now, red, blue, which one do you pick for you? If you stick around, you're going to find out about something new. This time on The Bullet Point. Welcome to The Boiling Point, I'm Richie Ware and this is Gerald Blaine. Now the red and the blue box, that's something that's really standard of course out into the industry that's the flame safeguard. Um, Gerald, real quick, maybe just tell us about what in the world these flame safeguards actually do. We got the fire eye, you've got the Honeywell. Well these are the BMS system, the, uh, the burner management. This is where all the safeties get checked out. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, these are critical uh, on any system. Uh, even when you have a full-blown, say, parallel positioning system, you're going to have something of this nature, whether it's the Honeywell, a fire eye, or built into an auto flame, as an example. Okay. And, and you know, some people maybe just hearing that the, what is, what the flame safeguard or the BMS, what is it actually doing? Because this is really the brains of the... Yeah, it's making sure that uh, things get purged properly, mm -hmm. that there's flame detection, uh, to make sure no more pumping gas into the boiler and there's no flame there present so okay. that we can avoid explosions and things of that nature. Okay. Um, okay, so, you know, as we're continuing to, to go into uh, more and more technology, there's actually a product that um, has really kind of come out. The auto flame's not new, but maybe talk a little bit about the auto flame flame safeguard. Yeah, what we've done is the, uh, the Mini 8 design has a feature now where it can just be a flame safeguard. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, other products have been more difficult to get. Uh, auto, ha auto flame had it available. The, the BMS was always in there. Mm -hmm. So uh, they just opted out all the other parameters and said you can use it purely as a flame safeguard. So literally um, they've got uh, you know, a Honeywell on there. This can come in and replace it. Yep. Okay. And or say a fire eye or anything that was serving as the BMS you can use this just for that feature. Hmm. And um, what, is, what are the advantages, I guess, when you, uh, you do that? Because obviously it's going to do exactly what this does. Right. But then why would we want to even do that? Well, the, the advantage that you could have is, say, if you had, uh, being that this is on the Mini 8 platform, mm -hmm. you could, at some point, on, say, a 300 horse and below, the smaller type systems, mm -hmm. you could convert this over uh, by getting an unlock code Mm. and then getting servos and the additional hardware mm. and you could operate it as a uh, parallel positioning system. Mm. So you have a linkage system basically and then all of a sudden you're going to servo motors. Right. And having those servo motors, tighter control, more right. efficiency. Definitely some added fuel savings and so forth. Okay. Now you mentioned something um, at 300 horsepower. Um, obviously there's bigger boilers out there mm. so what what is it that they do? There? Yeah, and if you had a bigger boiler and you were going from this, you would typically go to our full-blown MK8 system mm -hmm. because it has additional features like enunciation, water level control, automatic TDS, a variety of features that you're not going to get at this level. Okay. But at 300 and below, you might not be looking to have those features. Okay, awesome. All right, well, so you got some uh, technology that obviously is out there with the Honeywell, the Fire Eyes, um, you know, that are out there, but... Um, Autoflame has now got their control that then could potentially get you some more control out there. But uh, stick around uh, right now. You're actually going to hear from Autoflame, and they're actually going to go through all of the features um, about the um, uh, Autoflame Flame Safeguard. The Auto Flame Flame Safeguard is designed to be a swap in replacement for your typical flame safeguard that you're used to seeing on site, interfacing with your existing mod motor and thermostat controller. The device is going to output your pre-purge, light off and release to modulate commands, monitor the flame and control your burner outputs just like a typical flame safeguard. However, as is the Autoflame way, we've also encompassed many additional features into the Autoflame flame safeguard, such as password protection, customizable safety times, downloadable data, valve proving and many more. Now the Autoflame Flame Safeguard carries the same hardware and approvals associated with the Minimark 8MM. 
So when your customer is ready, they simply need to software unlock the Flame Safeguard to enable the full range of features that you get with the Mini Mark 8 MM. Here I am using the Autoflame Flame Safeguard to control a Modutrol motor. We do this by utilizing our channel one switch neutral outputs wired through two relays, which are detailed next to me here. Now these two relays ensure that the correct commands are driven from the Flame Safeguard to the Modutrol. And once the device is happy, we will release the Modutrol to modulation. When this happens, we relinquish control from the flame safeguard, switching over to a 0 to 135 ohm signal from the pressure troll. Now the relay module that I've got next to me here from Autoflame is optional and you may wish to use existing relays or your own relays entirely. When you purchase your Autoflame flame safeguard, there is a new option 109 which will automatically be enabled. This is your flame safeguard mode. You can see here, if I come back to your main commission mode menu, commission, gas pressure commission, air pressure commission, and your commission data are all disabled. That's because there is nothing to commission within the system. However, I go to my options and BC down here, these are all your burner control options, meaning all of your customizable safety times for your gas and oil are all present within the system. Here I am in the run mode of the Autoflame Flame Safeguard. Now this screen will be pretty familiar to you. However, this is now the only screen that the customer is going to be looking at. However, we do have a few options down here so we can access our options and parameters. However, only in read-only mode. We can view our run times, defining when the burner switch is on and when it shuts down. We can also go to our system log, which is sort of a combination between your fault log and any configuration changes within the system. And then of course, your familiar fault log, where we can look at your lockout history, errors, alarms, and your warnings. And we can also navigate to history up at the top here, where in this case, we're using a flame rod, so we're monitoring your ionization signal. However, the same UV and IR configurations that you're used to seeing on the Mini Mark 8 are also available on the Flame Safeguard. Any faults within the system, your runtime schedule and your Terminal 53 running interlock circuit will all shut down the burner and these will be logged in your fault log and your system log. Now Terminal 70 and 71 are switched neutral outputs from the Flame Safeguard and provide the high initiate, low initiate and release to modulate commands via those two relays. Now when Terminal 71 is low and Terminal 70 is high, the motor moves to purge. When Terminal 71 is low, and Terminal 70 is low, the motor moves to light off. When Terminal 71 is high, however, the motor then is released to modulate via your external pressure controller. Now I've got here my option 154, which in this case, I need to enable my start position interlock. In option 155, I then need to enable my purge interlock. So both my purge position interlock and start position interlock must be enabled. Now I can optionally use terminal 82 for valve proving, where I'm going to use a low gas pressure switch input and enable it via option 156. Here I am in the run mode of the Autoflame flame safeguard. So if I enable my burner, as in I'm putting a voltage input into terminal 53, my running interlock circuit, and assuming there are no active faults or nothing preventing the burner from starting, it's going to go through its startup phases. So we've just completed our fail-safe relay checks. We are checking the air switch at this point, and now we're running to purge. So we've output a signal from the flame safeguard to our mod motor via those two relays, and we are moving the linkage arm to its purge position. Now I have a 20 second pre-purge time set on this flame safeguard. The default is 40, it's purely 20 seconds just for this demonstration. So you can see here the same phase description that you're used to seeing is available on the flame safeguard. And we can see exactly how long we are purging for. So there are two switches, end switches within the mod motor 
and when they make, they will put an input into the corresponding terminal of the flame safeguard. So we have proved that we met our purge position. We're now running to our light off position, meaning the motor is now driving to its light off point. Now once this switch makes, we put another input into the flame safeguard. And this is how we ensure that each phase can move on to the next. So there we go, the end switch was made. We're now moving to ignition and pilot. After pilot proving, we then energize our main fuel valves. So all of your standard burner outputs. And once our main flame proving time has elapsed, we then release the motor to modulate. Now, as I said, we then relinquish control from the flame safeguard to our pressure trough. Now, I actually have a potentiometer wired up to my motor, and this will simulate a zero to 135 ohm signal from the pressure trough. So we can see we've now hit a fixed point of modulation in just a moment. Now, if I then start rotating my potentiometer, you'll see this linkage arm start to move. So if I rotate it one way, which is just a proportional zero to 135 ohm signal, you can see my linkage arm moving this way. If I rotate the other way, we're now gonna start moving clockwise. Now, when your customer's ready to upgrade their Autoflame flame safeguard, we will issue you with an unlock code. Exactly the same as the Mark 8 MM, that unlock code can be uploaded once in commission mode, either via the download manager, or you can actually type it in via the on-screen keyboard. I do have a few slides here that just go through that process. Now, once your Autoflame flame safeguard has been unlocked, you need to navigate to option 109, which is your flame safeguard mode, and disable that. Now, once you do that, you're enabling the full functionality of the Minimark 8 MM. Now we do have three new part numbers associated with the Autoflame Flame Safeguard, which I've got listed here. If you've got any questions about anything to do with the Autoflame Flame Safeguard, please do get in touch with me using our normal channels that you contact me on.